Hey everybody, it's Joe from Marmoset, back with another episode of Getting to Know Toolbag 3. Today I'll show you how to import your toolbag scene into Unreal. To start, go to the Help menu and click Get Unreal Plugin. This will bring you to the Unreal Marketplace page for the toolbag importer. You can also get here by searching the marketplace for toolbag. Now all that's left to do is install the plugin and you're good to go. If you can't seem to import toolbag scene files, go to Edit, Plugins, and make sure the toolbag importer is enabled. I've created a simple example scene with a variety of material types. I've got a material that uses the skin shader, a material that uses the metalness workflow, a material that uses the specular workflow, a material that uses cutout transparency, another that uses dithered transparency, and finally, one with an emissive map. Let's hop back over to Unreal and go over the import process. To start, click the Import button in the Content Browser. Now select your toolbag scene file. You can also load a toolbag material file if you don't want to load meshes or other objects from the scene. Let's go over the import options. Import mode determines whether your content is imported directly into the scene, or if only the materials are loaded, or if the scene will be imported as a blueprint, which is what I'll do here. Let's take a look at the material options now. With Perform Direct Import enabled, materials will be imported in a simplified, optimized form. When disabled, materials will be created with a more complex, expensive node graph, which retains more of the settings that you would expect to find in Toolbag. Generally, Perform Direct Import is what you want to use. The Metalness Conversion setting determines how to treat materials that were not created with the Metalness workflow. I'll leave this set to Prompt Per Material. The Import Filters section has an option to import lights, which I'll disable for now. It's worth noting that animated meshes, cameras, and other scene objects are not currently supported. Import Locations allows you to define where in your project the content will be saved. When you're happy with your settings, hit Import. The material that I created with a specular workflow needs to be converted to the metalness workflow to render properly in Unreal. Because this material contains both metal and non-metal surfaces, I'll select Generate Metalness. My skin material was created with the specular workflow as well. However, because this material does not have any metallic surfaces, I'll choose to treat it as an insulator, which means that a material will be created with the metalness value set to zero. Now I can drag the blueprint into the viewport to see the imported content. When I select a material, you'll see that a material instance has been created. This makes it easy to do things like swap out texture maps. If I double click on the material parent, I can take a look at the node graph view. Because this material was created with a metalness workflow, my inputs connect directly into the correct slots, resulting in a very optimized material. If I check out the material instance for the specular workflow ball, you'll see that there are a lot more settings to tweak. And if I go into the node graph view, you'll notice that this material is very complex. We have to do a certain amount of voodoo magic to convert specular content to the metalness workflow. While importing specular workflow content works, it's typically something you should avoid doing. If you have content authored for the specular workflow that you want to load into Unreal, go to the tutorial section on our website and check out the PBR conversion guide to see how to do a high quality conversion yourself. Most basic materials should import faithfully. However, some advanced materials like Newton's rings or anisotropic reflections are not supported, and others like the skin shader are only partially supported. The plugin will give you a prompt when you attempt to load unsupported materials. Unreal Skin Shader doesn't have support for the extensive options that you would see in Toolbag. We can tweak the look of the Skin Shader in Unreal by going to the Subsurface Profile and adjusting the Scatter Radius and Subsurface Color Settings. This is similar to the Scatter Depth setting in Toolbag Skin Shader. You can see that the other materials imported as well, with the Alpha Maps and Emissive Map being correctly applied. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit about best practices. As I mentioned before, if you're creating content for Unreal, you should be using the metalness workflow. To make this easy to set up in Toolbag, go to the Material Presets and select the Unreal 4 template. This will give you a preset material with the gloss map inverted for roughness maps, a metalness map input, and the GGX reflection model. You may want to enable Flip Y in the normal map options as well, as Unreal uses left-handed or 3ds Max style normal maps. 
For this scene, I've already set up my materials with the correct map types. So let's take a look at what that looks like in Unreal. This time, when I import the scene, I'll enable lights so that I can mimic my lighting setup from Toolbag a little more closely. Now when I drag in my blueprint, you can see that the lights come in as well. Since I set up my material and tool bag with supported texture types, you can see that the material is really efficient in the node view. As I rotate around a bit, you can see how this material looks in motion. To get more consistent lighting between tool bag and Unreal, you can load a custom HDR image. To do that, add a skylight object, set the source type to SLS specified cube map, and then drag your HDR panorama into the slot. Due to various differences in lighting systems and post effects, it can be difficult to get an exact match between Toolbag and Unreal. However, as long as you're using supported shader models and texture types, content that looks good in Toolbag should look great in Unreal as well. That wraps up this video. As always, thanks for watching, and check out our website for more tutorials, information, artwork, and other cool stuff.